You're welcome to The Gavel. I'm Linda Kibi. Now, allegations of budget padding and abuse of office by federal lawmakers are not over yet. During the week, Representative Abdulmumin Jubin met with the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption to brief committee members on the allegations he made against the leadership of the House of Representatives and nine other lawmakers. Since this scandal broke, there have been calls for a thorough investigation of the allegations made, but at the same time, some opinion leaders are calling for a thorough review of the budgeting process in the National Assembly and also in the executive. The former chairman of the House of Representatives Appropriation Committee, Abdul Mumin Jibrin, during the week, met with the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption to brief committee members on the allegations he made against the leadership of the House of Representatives and nine other lawmakers. The meeting was held behind closed doors and lasted for nearly four hours. Briefing journalists after the meeting, Representative Jibrin says his allegations are not about settling scores with the Speaker of the House, but to ensure that a comprehensive reform is done to clean up the budgeting system in the National Assembly. Representative Jibrin also says his submission of corruption allegations against the House leadership to the EFCC does not grant him any immunity and he would readily submit himself for investigation. Well, the issue of uh, allowances that I, I raised is a simple matter. Anybody who uh, I have mentioned, I mentioned the 10 principal officers, anybody who believes that uh, he has used his uh, allowances ju uh, judiciously and for the purpose it is meant for, all you need to do is to come uh, out and say, yes, I have collected a uh, so, so so amount, but I have used it uh, properly. I have also said I have collected uh, a certain amount, and I have said I can justify the utilization, and I use it for the purpose that it is meant for. <laughs> so it is up to the 10 principal officers whom I have cited as, in the first instance, as an example. I have given 10. I have said, come out to tell the country if you've used it uh, judiciously. If you've not, uh, you will uh, you face the law. Representative Jibrin has been in a war of words with the Speaker of the House, Yakubu Dogara, members of the House leadership, and other lawmakers over allegations of padding the 2016 budget. Representative Jibrin leveled these allegations against the House leadership after he was removed as the chairman of the Appropriations Committee. The Speaker of the House and the lawmakers accused of budget padding have repeatedly denied these allegations, maintaining that Representative Jibrin himself abused his office as chairman of the Appropriations Committee. The National Assembly is on recess, but there are still pockets of activities going on during the week. President Buhari has assented to the Federal Capital Territory Appropriation Bill. The Senior Special Assistant on National Assembly Matters, Senator Itainang, made this known to journalists during the week. The FCT budget, which was passed and assented to by President Buhari, is put at 241.5 billion naira, with 154.8 billion for capital expenditure, 52.9 billion for personnel cost, while 34.4 billion for overhead. President Mohamed Buhari is asking the National Assembly to hasten the passage of statutory budgets for 29 government corporations and agencies. President Buhari, who made the request through his senior special assistant on National Assembly matters. Mr. President, laid before the Senate and the House of Representatives the budget of uh, NNPC, Central Bank, Deposit Insurance Corporation, uh, Inland Revenue Service, Federal Inland Revenue Service, the uh, NTA, FRCN, uh, and all statutory corporations. The effect of the approval will be that the economy will be stimulated because most of the agencies like the Nigeria Port Authority, Nigeria Railway Corporation, Federal Inland Revenue Service, uh, Communications Commission, and all of them will have the uh, uh, have capital projects. It's hard times for Nigerians at the moment. During the week, the dollar rose as high as 322 naira to a dollar officially and 420 at the black market. In a dollar-driven and import-reliant economy such as Nigeria, this has driven the cost of goods and services higher. 
Now, some companies are also laying off staff, citing the inability to pay salaries. When the finance minister, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun, appeared before the Senate before the recess, she admitted that the country is going through a recession and spoke about what government is doing to get out of this economic challenge. And let's revisit her appearance at the Senate. A day before the National Assembly went on its annual recess, the Senate invited the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun, to brief lawmakers on the state of the economy. With the rising exchange rate and worrying economic indicators, federal lawmakers demanded an explanation from the minister as to what exactly the challenges are. In the company of key officials of the Ministry of Finance, the minister enters the chamber to address the issues of concern to many Nigerians. She told the lawmakers what the government is doing to ensure fiscal discipline in the face of recession, key amongst which is the reduction in recurrent expenditure. She urged Nigerians not to panic over recent comments by international organizations and the economy. The economy is actually in very, very good hands and we're doing absolutely our best to get through this difficult period. And I explained how we're doing that. We're being extremely disciplined around our spending. We're investing in the essential infrastructure. I gave the metric. We have released 74 billion naira to works in two months, compared to 19 billion for the whole of last year. We are doing everything possible to avert and to manage the situation, which we didn't create, unfortunately. I'm not too worried about the IMF projection, and I'll tell you why. Because IMF's job, one of their functions is global economic surveillance. They've equally issued a negative report on Britain as a result of Brexit. So I don't think we should panic every time IMF speak. There were questions from the lawmakers. Most of them dwelt on how the federal government plans to mitigate the impact of the fall of oil prices on the masses. 2016 budget, we have 2.2 trillion um, budget deficit. And I was expecting you in your presentation to tell us how, how far you've gone with the borrowings because you said about 900 billion will be borrowed locally, yes. another 900 no, externally, and about 400 from um, recovery from the loot. The minister told lawmakers that 14 billion naira has been released for the social intervention program, while a total of 247 billion naira capital releases have been made. She is confident that this will stimulate economic activities in the country. We have been very honest and said we don't have money. We have been borrowing to pay salaries for at least the last two years. So the fact that states were paying salaries was actually a photo trick. It was not the right way to run government. And we believe it's time to be very honest. The honesty that we're now forcing, or even on the state governments, is why you're seeing them exposed ghost workers cleaning up their payroll. There's no point in borrowing to pay salaries to people that don't exist. We have to be very honest with ourselves where we are today. This economic team stands for honesty and for transparency. We will tell you the truth. Even if the truth is not palatable, we will continue to tell the truth. This government is not, and I, I can repeat, not immune to the suffering of the people. All the people that are suffering are our people. They're all Nigerians, as you said correctly. When it comes to suffering, there's no party colour. There's no tribe. So we are working very hard. That was why we brought out the fiscal sustainability plan, when we realised that states consistently could not pay salaries. And we made that money conditional. It's been more than a month since the Minister of Finance gave this assurances to lawmakers. But the Naira is still continuing its freefall against the dollar and other currencies. Job cuts are still the order of the day. And Nigeria is facing a full-blown recession.